first just about um, oh, we'll do we'll do picture day I mean this is a big day because this picture lasts a long time right it's a uh, you know, I'm not a morning person, so when you got to get up at 7:30 to come take pictures, it's not ideal. But like you said, you got to keep a smile on your face and keep that serious moment because this is going to be one of those pictures that's uh, all over the internet, and you don't get to, you know, hey, take that down or hey, let's redo it. So you got to you got to take it pretty serious. Uh, obviously, as we start our day, we haven't eaten breakfast yet, so it's it's one of those like grumpy grumpy mornings, but we have to kind of act that out and, and uh, get through it. And, and, you know, it's in the stadiums, too. I mean, those jumbotrons are huge right. now. So if you got, you know, a yeah. piece of lettuce in your teeth or right. something, it's going to be a problem. Yeah, absolutely. I think uh, we make we, – we have fun with these moments, um, you know, especially the interview-style stuff, all the, all the little still shots and photos that they're taking on the green screens and all that. We know that those are going to be, you know, around the league this year. So just taking pride in it. Um, you know, and like I said, just waking up with that smile on your face. So, how long did it take you to get ready? Did you have to, you know, work on a few things this morning? No, I didn't have to put my makeup on or do my hair or anything like that. I just, you know, kind of rolled out of bed and, and uh, you know, rolled up to the parking lot, got out, put on the uniform, and, and I was ready to go. You got teammates that are still in front of the mirror in there, you think? Uh, yeah, there's probably a couple of them doing their hair, making sure they look good, uh, fixing their jersey, fixing their pants, all that stuff. But uh, for the most part, I would say we're a pretty, pretty uh, low-key group, um, which makes it you know that much enjoyable in the clubhouse. All right, for you this year, how excited are you for what potential is finally there for you after going through all the Tommy Johns and the rehabs and, and to get yourself to this point? Yeah, you know, it's, uh, it's a special moment for me, uh, absolutely. Um, you know, being a part of this group, uh, you know, reflecting on the past 16, 17 months um, since my second Tommy John surgery, um, all the way back in 2022 when I got traded over here. Unfortunately, I, you know, had to get a you know, second Tommy John, but um, there's, there's so much positive to take away from this, this rehab process, and I'm very blessed and very fortunate to have overcome everything, all the obstacles in the way, the goods and the bads, um, and just, you know, looking, I'm, I'm so excited and so prepared for this 2024 season um, and, and following Pablo's footsteps and, and our young staff that we have behind him, um, including myself. I'm just, I'm super excited to be a part of this group and looking forward to everything we learn as a group, holding each other accountable, leading on each other. Um, in tough times when things aren't going our way or whatever the case might be. Um, just building that friendship, building that, that uh, atmosphere in the clubhouse that we want to create. And, uh, you know, when you do come back from an injury like this, there's a lot of people that forget about you. Um, but as long as you stay true to yourself and you know what you bring to the table, you know, life, life's going to be just fine. And that's, that's exactly what I did. And, you know, I'm going to do, do my damnedest to show my family, show myself, and show the twin fans that, you know, Chris Paddock is back and he's ready for the 2024 season. So what was your thought when they said, you got to do this again? Were you like, come on, really? You know, my first go around all the way back in 2016, I was a young kid. You know, I had a, had a lot of doubt, had a lot of worry, uh, didn't know what to expect. You know, just a lot, of, a lot of mixed emotions. The mind was taking me places I've never been to. Um, you know, having some success in the big leagues and, and being older and more mature, I think, uh, you know, this go around was a lot easier. And uh, having success and overcoming my first one definitely helped uh, with, with going under the knife for the second time. Um, but, you know, I just try and lean on people in my corner, my family, my friends, um, you know, some of my teammates, whoever it might be that I look up to. But uh, this journey, it's, it's been long. Um, you know, but it's just part of my story, and it's just another chapter of, of my book. And, you know, I, I love telling my story, and I know, I'm, I know it's inspiring someone out there because they're either, they can either relate to or they're going through it currently. So I'm not going to hide behind, you know, closed doors and, and say that it was easy, um, but I, I definitely uh, did what it took, and I'm, I'm very blessed and very thankful, and I'm, I'm proud of myself. You know, this is one of those moments where you should be proud of yourself, and everything that you've overcome and, and have 
you know, broke those barriers that might have stopped another person or whatever it might have been. Uh, you know, I, I'm, I see the light at the end of the tunnel, and I, I'm ready to go. I'm more prepared than I've ever been um, as I enter my sixth season in the big leagues. And uh, we got a special group over here. And uh, getting eliminated a little sooner than we would like last year, we're coming, we're coming back this year with, with uh, you know, even more energy and, and uh, more excitement for the twin fans. What's it going to be like when you make that first start, when you walk out to that mound? Well, I'm going to try and tell you that I'm going to control my emotions and, <laughs> and uh, you know, go out there and have fun and enjoy it. Um, but that's, it's, it's easier said than done, you know, but uh, I'm, I'm super excited for that opportunity when it presents itself. Um, you know, usually when you get that first one out of the belt or under your belt, you know, the rest of all 29 other starts or 30 other starts, whatever it might be, are a little easier, you know, because you have four months off from the game. Um, that's, that's why they, they bring us down here to, to Fort Myers to, to kind of iron out some of those kinks um, and just get our game ready for that upcoming season. But uh, for me, just, you know, being present in the moment, uh, know what Chris Paddock does well, um, and just go out there and compete my ass off, and, and everything else will take care of itself. All right, you have a look to yourself. Um, when you come to work, when you drive into work, uh, you're there to win the day, aren't you? Absolutely, man. I think, uh, you know, winning in life, winning the day, winning the moment, uh, those are all things that, you know, we can control. You know, the attitude, our effort, you know, trying to do our best each and every day, no matter what obstacles are thrown at us or, or whatever might get in the way. But for me, I just, I was raised that way is, is don't take an opportunity for granted. And, uh, you know, some days are better than others, absolutely. But I try and, you know, keep that serious face, keep that smile on my face and, and inspire everybody around me. Um, but also I have expectations for myself and that's, that's to be, you know, the best version of Chris Paddock. And, uh, you know, I don't want to go home at night or lay my debt, lay my head down on the pillow with any regrets. And, uh, you know, the word I get, I'm coming up with is opportunity. You know, there's so many people that would be in our shoes, would love to be in our shoes. We're living out our dream while other little kids and other college players or other minor league guys are, are chasing it, you know? So don't take the opportunity for granted because there's somebody up next. And, uh, I don't want that, you know, job to be taken away from me. You know, baseball is going to move on without me, unfortunately. Um, I just want to soak in these, you know, my, my success and my career and enjoy every moment and build these friendships and, and relationships with my teammates and coaches and, uh, you know, creating an atmosphere for fans and, you know, the whole nine. It's just it, it, you can get deep into winning the day, winning the year, whatever it is. Um, but I would say a lot of that is, is kudos to my mom, just how she was, how she raised me growing up. Yeah, because... All right, you're from Texas, right? And the cowboy boots, the hat. Uh, where did that come from, and what is the message? Yeah, so I guess uh, anybody who's listening to this, if if y'all are from Texas, y'all know exactly how we are. You know, everything is bigger in Texas. We're, you know, we I have a tattoo of the state on my arm. You know, it's just we love the state. Uh, it's kind of one of those things we're just we take pride in. We're very passionate about, and. Uh, I'm just doing a little bit. I'm trying to, to keep that tradition going, you know, as, as best I can. Um, you know, I did buy my, my dream truck that y'all saw earlier this morning. Um, that's not for show. That's, I have, you know, trailers back home. I got tractors, skid steers, cows to haul to and from the butcher, whatever it might be, um, you know, behind closed doors of what Chris Patty does on the baseball field. And then obviously the cowboy hat, um, the man behind the hat. It's just how I was raised, man. I grew up on a ranch. Um, I love that lifestyle, being being away from the city. And then obviously the cowboy boots, uh, kind of pretty pretty self-explanatory. But um, I tell the guys, those are my Jordans. You know, the, the hat's my Gucci bag, you know, whatever it might be. That's just my style. That's just what works for me. Uh, and the guys love it. And they're, they're uh, you know, they give me credit on a daily basis. So, So would you rather wear a cowboy hat versus a baseball hat on the mound? <laughs> That's a good question, man. If, I mean, if I had the choice, absolutely, the cowboy hat would be legit. But uh, <laughs> 99% of the time I'm in a hat, whether it's a cowboy hat, ball cap, uh, snapback, whatever it is, uh, even though I am proud of my mullet, uh, 
I, I do wear a hat majority of the time. <laughs> so that's awesome. Um, just lastly about you know, so you ride horse then and everything? You guys? No, I don't ride you? horses. Uh, that's a little bit more upkeep. Um, you know, during an off season. To so how able, do you move the cows around that? Or so whatever? I got a I got a border collie. Uh, <laughs> his name is Ace. He helps me kind of do the the grit work uh, behind the scenes. I'm just in my side by side you know chasing the cows around but i only have you know a couple head of cows i don't have 200 like some of these ranchers i just don't have the time for it um you got another job yeah i got another job <laughs> you know when when baseball is done in the future one day you know that is definitely something that i enjoy doing and would love to start a cattle company um you know another guy great great texan is nolan ryan he has nolan ryan beef you know it's I look up to a lot of these guys, and I, it's, I'm very passionate about it, so it, it just makes that much, you know, it's something to look forward to. I enjoy doing it. It's fun. Um, so, yeah, man, Texas, Texas, I, I take very good pride in that.